Good morning. This morning's verse is from the book of Ecclesiastes. It is Ecclesiastes 12, 13. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You know, this is the book, this is a book that was written by King Solomon. King Solomon, we know um, originally his father, King David, from Bathsheba's story, or the story of Bathsheba, a king who was who was was headed in the direction to rebuild the temple, but God said, no, you have done too many things wrong. You will be part of the story, but it will be your son, King Solomon, who will rebuild the temple. And King Solomon is writing this book, and it's, it is the close of, of his story, really. This book, the final chapter, 12, he goes through his, his trials and tribulations of life, and he is realizing in the final chapter of Ecclesiastes that nothing matters. Nothing he has done in this world matters because the only thing that matters is chasing after God and having a relationship with God. And in that, after all of his lessons, everything he has learned, the mistakes that he has made, the sins that he has, has um that he has committed, that he can't take back, he recognizes that in chasing everything that he chased looking for freedom, or looking for happiness, looking for joy, and let's face it, he made his mistake of, uh, he made many mistakes, over a thousand relationships documented, 700, I think it's wives, and 300 concubines, a thousand relationships, and what he was looking for he still couldn't be found. And he realizes and brings to our attention in Ecclesiastes 12, the final chapter of the, of the book, that the only thing that matters, the end of all matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's amazing. Well, we've looked at the word fear before. For fear not necessarily meaning be afraid of God, but be reverent of God. Have a respectful fear of God. Have a relationship with with God that involves respect and honor and bringing glory to him and having that relationship. And we look further at this and it says, keep his commandments. Now we could dissect this and that's exactly what the Jews did. They came out with 530 something, I believe it is, laws that they were supposed to keep. And if we boil it back, you know, we have now 10 commandments and they all boil back really to one thing love God. And we are told, we hear the story of a, of, a, of a discussion with Jesus, and Jesus says, above all things, love God, and do this by loving each other. So when we look at this verse, when I was looking at this verse today, fear God and keep his commandments. If we look all the way back at the Garden of Eden, God said to Adam, really, do two things. One, you are in the garden, tend the garden. And then he looked at him and said, you know what? It's not really good for you to be alone. Probably thinking, you'll get in trouble here, left alone. So he brought in Eve. Good plan. That didn't work out well either. But that was part of God's plan. So together, Adam and Eve sinned and they fell short. And what God had told them before they sinned was he said, go and populate the earth, which effectively means go and make more of you. You who were made perfect in my God image, Go and make more perfect people. But after sin, that was no longer possible. So we go through the, the entire conflict and how the world went through all kinds of judgments. And then eventually Jesus came on the scene as the only way to save us from that sin. And what did Jesus say? Go and make disciples. Now in this case, it was a, it, we, we had a better understanding, or at least now we have a better understanding, which is saying again, go and make more perfect people like you in my image made perfect only through me, Jesus. The message has always been the same. Go, and it says here, fear God and keep his commandments. Go and make more disciples of God. Originally, it was make more perfect people like you, like me, and it turned now in the New Testament to go and make more people made perfect through Jesus' grace like you made perfect in me. And the message is the same. And how do we do this? We do this by the second part of what we were told by Jesus, love God and love others. So we do that by loving others. And when I looked at this verse, 
I thought to myself, okay, how can I keep these commandments? Why would I keep? Because this is the whole duty of man. The first thing we were told, go and make more of you. And since we've fallen down and, and David had his mistakes, Solomon had his mistakes, and we're recognizing here in Solomon's wisdom, which he is known for, after all the wisdom he was given by God, he came back to one thing, keep God's commandments of, of loving him, and we know later by loving others, because this is the whole duty of man. Man, be in your garden, be where God placed you, and do what he told you. Steward what he has given you and love him through loving others. And how do we love others? We love others by wanting the best for them, by doing the best for them, by giving the best to them. And I looked at this in the midst of the men's ministry that, that, that is so dear to me. This is the whole duty of man. So how do we do this? This is what we are reminded. The whole duty of what men are supposed to be is leading people to God. Before Jesus, it was through perfection. After Jesus, it's through grace. But the whole duty of man is to go and make disciples. We are told this. And this verse speaks that so loudly. And we look at King Solomon. After all the errors that he went through, he found the one thing. Now, granted, I'll bet at the end of this, he could look back and say, Man, I wish I had listened to the stuff that Dad told me. Dad being King David. And I look at the stuff and say, Man, I wish I had listened to the stuff that people have told me. Ironically, my dad's name is also David. And I wish I had listened to my dad. And I wish I had listened to my mom. And I wish I had listened better to the pastor of my youth. And I wish I had listened to my teachers and my friends and wise counsel and elders. I wish I had listened to so many people. But just like Adam in the garden, I figured I could do it my own way. So I had to learn these things through my own errors, through my own my own sins and my own falling down because I didn't have the wisdom that we are told to learn and, rev and, and, and have respect for in youth. So I had to wander away and I had to make my mistakes and learn my own lessons and come back then asking for God's grace so that I could go and make disciples. And now understanding what my mission is. So as part of who I am, I'm trying to figure out how do I do this? The whole duty of man what is the duty of man? I should be the, my mission field should be my neighbors. It should be my, my church friends. It should be people I pass in the street. But most importantly, it should be the people that live under my own roof. God calls the man to be head of the, the, the spiritual leader of the household. He calls the man to be, um, to, to keep God's ways and keep order in his house. I, my primary mission, mission field should be my children and right here where I am. And beyond that, I should spend all of my days looking at this verse and going through the Bible and trying to figure out what is it that I can do? What, what, what talents and gifts has God given me such that I can go make more disciples, make more of God through his grace, through sharing my experiences, walking with people, so that I can fulfill the whole duty of man by keeping God's commandments, by fearing him, because in the end, that's all that matters. Again, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 reminds me that my entire, every, everything that I've done in life amounts to nothing because at the end I will leave with nothing. And the only thing that matters is the, the, the dash on my, my, um, my tombstone, my headstone, between my start date and my end date, there's, a, there's that dash. And my whole life is represented by that dash. What did I do in that dash? How was I a man such that I witnessed to other people through not only my words, but especially my actions? And when people looked at me, did they see somebody who loves God by loving people. I hope so. I pray so. And I pray every day that, that I do better at that today than I did yesterday. And I do better tomorrow than I did today. So Ecclesiastes 12, 13 reminds me who I'm supposed to be and I'm supposed to be a man. So as it was stated by King Solomon, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the end of the matter 
all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Father God, I thank you for what you have given me and the lessons that you share with me. Father, the opportunity to walk with you when I get out of my own way and make the time to put you first. Father God, you are always there. Somewhere right outside the front door, maybe the top of the hill, somewhere along the line, Lord God, when I take the time to listen for you and be in your word, you're always there. And God, you you say that I'm I'm to be in your word. I'm to be listening to your word, reading your word, going to church to hear your word. But Father God, one of the biggest things we can do as men is be in groups with other men. Because those are the men that are supposed to hold us accountable. Those are the ones that are supposed to know all our, our difficulties and our struggles. I have to imagine that there was... There were conversations between David and Solomon at some point and the things they were wrestling with and, and that wisdom was passed probably both directions at some point. And Father God, I like to believe that as, as David was Solomon's dad and, and my dad was mine, that somewhere along the line, David held Solomon, account, Solomon accountable. And Father God, we are called to be men among men and to hold each other accountable to your word. So it is vitally important that we know your word and we are honest with ourselves and our brothers about your word. So Father God, I thank you for the wisdom that you've given me and I pray that you give me the intelligence to listen to the wisdom that you have shared and that others share with me all the time. No matter what the struggle is, Lord, you're there you provide the way, you provide the answers, you give the grace, you give it all. So Father God, I thank you for what you have done and how you love me. I thank you for your mercy, your grace, your love, and I thank you for walking with me every step of my day in every day, whether I am looking for you or not, you are watching out for me. And Lord, I pray that I take time to turn to you as I walk through this day and thank you and ask you what I'm supposed to do in the circumstances I come up with and I find myself in. So Father God, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your son. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Let it lead me through this day such that I can go and fulfill the entire duty of man by loving my brothers and sisters to show you that I love you. I ask this all in your son Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life You got pain He's a pain taker you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, <laughs> save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Okay, sometimes the notes aren't pretty, but the message is the same. Our entire duty is to love each other by sharing. God with everybody we come along with in every circumstance, we find ourselves able to do so. And if we can't say the words, we can at least model the action. So I pray that today you take the time to spend a little time with God and getting to know him if you've, if you've walked away and spending time with him to, to encourage you. And I also remind you that we're supposed to walk in groups. We were built for community just like Adam and Eve. We were built to be in relationships with people, but most importantly, we were built to be in relationship with God. So remember that our entire duty is to fulfill those relationships and to build those relationships and to build them all toward God. So I pray that you have a fantastic day. May God bless you and keep you, and we will see you here again soon.